Hi, I'm Erin St. Blaine, and today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D crystal gem using Fusion 360 and Slicer so that we can print it out on a flat piece of laminated cellophane and assemble it into this three-dimensional gem. Here's my finished gem in Fusion 360. So this is what we're going for. Um, it's got six sides and uh, I've made the whole thing parametric so we can adjust the height, we can adjust the size of the two hexagons at the top or the bottom. Um, the whole thing's real customizable so you can make it however you'd like so it looks just like your idea of the perfect crystal gem. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'll do is create a sketch. We'll do it on this floor plane right here and I want to add a inscribed polygon right to this center point right here. We'll make it about an uh, inch and a half at the moment. We'll go ahead and change this in just a minute. Right now we'll set up some user parameters. I want to be able to change the height of the three different sections of the top section, the middle section, and the bottom um, as well as being able to change the radius. So we've got a few different uh, parameters I'd like to add. I'm going to add one called top radius and we'll make this one 0.9 inches. And hit my plus button. Uh, bottom radius. For now this will be 0.6 inches. We'll call one side height. We'll make this 1.5 inches for now. Top height and we'll make this 0.75 and bottom height. We'll make 0.5 for now. These are all going to be changeable later so we will be able to change the dimensions of our crystal real easily. So for right now, let's go ahead and make this, since it's going to be our bottom hexagon, let's go ahead and I'm going to hit D to dimension sketch and go from here to here. We're going to have a radius and we're going to call that bottom radius. So that will now automatically snap to whatever our dimension is. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop sketch for this one. Now I'm going to start creating some offset planes. So I'm going to construct an offset plane using this as the initial plane and the distance is going to be side height. So this is going to be just the height of the sides and now I can create my top hexagon sketch on this plane right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll create another sketch using our construction plane. I think I've got it selected already so we're going to go ahead and uh, create another inscribed polygon. I want to make sure I'm on the right plane here. Yeah, it looks like I am. Okay. Start right at the center again. And this time we're going to make our uh, dimension, I'm hitting D again, to be top radius. There we go. And stop sketch. All right, now we've got two sketches lined up right above each other. Um, the next thing I want to do is create a vertical line with the top and bottom points of the crystal. So we're going to start by making another sketch. And this time our sketch is going to go on this side plane here. And we just want to do a line. So I'm going to start somewhere above right on the right on the line but somewhere above my first plane and down to below my second plane and I'm hitting escape and D for dimension we're going to dimension this no oh that's not quite what I want we're going to undo that and we're going to dimension this this point of the line to this point on the triangle and is it going to let me there we go 
this is going to be bottom height. And then from this point to this point is already side height because it's defined by the plane. So let's do a sketch dimension from here to the top. And this is going to be our top height parameter. Okay, great. And I'll hit stop sketch here too. So now we kind of have the bones of our jewel. So it's time to start extruding. Uh, we're going to be using the loft command. That's going to keep uh, be able to make us come from from our hexagon here up to the point at the top of the crystal. And we'll keep it connected and sharp, chain selection, and we'll go ahead and make a new body for right now. Now let's do another loft. And this time we're going to loft from our bottom point, from our bottom hexagon to this plane here. And we're going to use join over here so that we have just the one body. And then finally, we'll do a, a loft from the bottom gone to our bottom point of our line. And my line is not showing up readable here. Why is that? There we go. I just need to turn it on. Okay, and we're also hitting join, and there we go. Now we've got our crystal. Uh, and if we change our parameters, we can really make it, um, you know, change with however we like. If I'd like it a little skinnier, maybe at the top, we'll make it 0.7 up there. Uh, we can change the side height to be a little taller if we want. Um, it's real customizable. You can make it kind of however you'd like it to be. I think uh, for right now, I'd like to, to go back to my original parameters. I kind of like that proportions. We'll make this an inch and a half. And there we go. That looks like a crystal to me. So I'll go ahead and save this and then um, we will export it using the Slicer app so that we can turn it into a paper craftable model. Now, in order to use the Slicer app, we have to make sure it's installed. So um, under add-ins, you want to go to scripts and add-ins or, or the app store. And you can go over here and you can find the Slicer app um, and install it. Let's see. And here it is right now. Um, I already have it installed, but once you've got yours installed, then uh, come on back. Um, once it's installed, it will show up here under the make icon. So I'm going to go ahead and open Slicer for Fusion 360. I'm going to select my crystal and medium refinements fine and click OK. And now here's my crystal imported into the Slicer app. Um, this app will give me some different uh, ideas and suggestions for how to slice this thing up. Uh, it's got some cool different uh, options. You can do stack slices, interlock slices, so for like a laser cutter or uh, a lot of different kind of cool ways to, to make this thing happen. But what we want is folded panels and that will make it um, so that we can use a paper crafting kind of printable model. Um, right now it looks like it's too large but we'll fix that in just a minute. Um, the other thing we want to mess with is the joint type. Um, of all these joint types, the one that seems to work the best for this project is the rivet type. That's going to make larger tabs like this that we'll be able to glue together pretty easily. Uh, right now, we're looking at a letter size sheet, which is what we want, but uh, it's horizontal instead of vertical. So I went ahead and made a custom um, landscape. Uh, layout it just fits a little bit better on the paper there and as you can see it still doesn't quite fit so now we can start messing with the height make sure that uniform scale is checked and we can start making it a little smaller 
until it will fit on our paper. Now, this tends to do a very different job every single time I use it. Um, so you kind of do have to go in there and refine how it fits. Right now, this is sort of an awkward, we'd have to make it pretty small to fit on our laminated cellophane. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and add and remove seams so that I can mess with it and see if I can get it into a better configuration. If I click on the blue seam, uh, that will make one disappear, or if I click on one that's not highlighted, it will make it up here. So looking at this, I may wanna disconnect it here, and that looks like it's the small size. So we'll look over here and see where it's connected and maybe get rid of that one. And click done just to see what it does. No, it didn't like that. So let's try removing a couple more of these seams. Oh, and now you're starting to see we have it on two separate pages, but it's just not a very good cut. Um, my advice is just to keep messing with it until you get a cut that looks adequate. And okay, after a whole bunch of messing around, I've got it laid out so that it'll turn in two pieces, which looks pretty nice, uh, looks pretty easy to assemble. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the plans for this. And it lets me choose EPS, PDF, or DXF. I'm gonna go ahead and choose PDF for right now and export it to my computer. You can also send it straight to the printer if you wanted to just print it out and cut it with a utility knife. Now from here, you can take the design and edit it to upload to a vinyl cutter program to have it cut automatically, or you can just cut it out by hand. Uh, once you have the pieces cut out, then uh, just some crazy glue on the tabs will stick them all together into this amazing, awesome gem. I, uh, I'm using cellophane gift wrap uh, that I ran through a laminating machine. So it's nice and stiff, and then inside as the diffuser is just a piece of crumpled up cellophane as well. And I'm using a circuit playground with some uh, flame code inside with a battery, uh, triggered with sound so that when I blow it out, then the light goes out. See the full build tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System, and remember to subscribe for more fun, crafty videos. Thanks a lot.